watching one television station. And one of them told me, Mama, we've discovered one television station. I said, what's that? And he said, Emmanuel TV. I said, wow. So I sat down with them. We started watching. After some time, I left. I went into my room. In the same 2014, we, we, we are continuously watching this Emmanuel TV. And I was praying along with man of God each time he comes up to say the mass prayer. And my prayer point besides that time was like, God, save for me so that one day I will find myself in this church. And within myself, all some other prayers we have been followed. But that was my strong prayer point. Save for me one day. Let me come to this synagogue church of all nations. So in March 2014, I was in my office and one of my senior colleagues came around and said, and spoke to me in my ears and said, Madam, do you know you have been posted? <laughs> I laughed because I work in the foreign service, in my foreign ministry back in Sierra Leone. As a third grade, there is no way they can, promote, they can post you as a foreign officer in our mission. It's like a, a dream. So I just waved it at the back of my hand. But within me, I knew I had been praying for this. Then I knelt down quietly. I said, God, perfect this message for me. After two days, I came back to the office. And the same senior colleague came back and showed me the list that, Madam, you have been posted to Nigeria. I say, thank you, Jesus. The God of Prophet T.D. Joshua have actually started answering my prayers. I came believing God. I was posted here as third secretary, and it's not normal. I believe we have civil servants here. For you, as a third secretary, to be posted in our mission, our foreign mission, is, is just God. Only God and the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua could have done that one. So I came March 2014. I took up an uh, appointment in Lagos as the liaison officer heading our liaison office here in Lagos. The same 2014 as if my God was not still satisfied with me. I was promoted to assistant secretary grade seven. I say, wow, thank you, Jesus. I made myself available in this church. I'm a member of this church. So I continued praying. In 2016, June, they now sent Sakila Memo all around our missions for substantive secretaries so go back home to take up examination for the promotion of senior assistant secretary. I say, wow, exam. <laughs> I don't know when last I opened book to read. I say, okay. So I call one of my colleagues in Addis, Ethiopia. I say, please, they say we are to go and, and take exam. Can you send me some materials? And he said, materials? Which materials? I say, just send me any material. They say we are going to take this exam. He sent a whole bulk of materials. I downloaded them. I couldn't read because they were too much for my, for my brain. And I told him, can you just send me the civil servant's code? At least as a civil servant, let me read through our civil service code. And he sent it. I watched through it. I keep on praying with man of God, coming to church, using my money water, my anointing sticker, and all the weapons I have on me, my faith bracelet, I went for that exam. When we went, the exam, they wrote us on the 4th, the exam was supposed to be on the 24th June. See how short the notice was. But I went with my faith bill of, so we went, we took the exam, I came back. I came back. When I came back, the results were out in November 2016, and I made up, I passed to the position as senior assistant secretary. I said, thank you, Jesus. But I couldn't jubilate because 
in the service, when they said they promoted you, you wait for your appointment letter proper. So I was waiting for that letter. So in January, on January 7th, I now received my promotion letter as a senior assistant secretary in a diplomatic <laughs> post. I'm now first secretary. People of God, I want you to jubilate with me. I came here as third secretary. I'm standing here in your midst as first secretary, senior assistant secretary in the civil service. I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Thank you, Emmanuel. God is with us. People of God, put your hands together for Christ Jesus. Indeed, our God is a faithful God. Our God is a God of excellence. Just as the way a mother would never forget our baby at the back, so God will never forget you in Jesus' name. Promotion will locate you in Jesus' mighty name. Ma'am, we thank God for what the Lord has done in your life. We know you are thankful to God for this beautiful promotion. Tell us, Ma, in your, in your workplace, in your, as a service, does it usually happen like this? Is this the way it normally goes? It is not normal, as I said earlier on, in the civil service. When you watch the trend of my promotion, I entered the service 2011. 2014, I was posted here. In the same 2014, I got my promotion as administrative secretary cadet, grade 7. 2016, I'm standing here as a senior assistant secretary. It is not normal. It's only God. It's only God. Because this position I'm holding, you will enter as a higher executive officer, you will take like five years for you to move from one position to another. But if you look in my own case, I think it's just like three and a half years. I'm standing here as a senior assistant secretary, first secretary in a diplomatic ring. It's only God. I thank the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for mighty Jesus. Now we can see a document next to you. Can you tell us what is on the document? Okay. Yes. As you can see, this was a letter I got when I was posted as third secretary to come and take up appointments in our mission. That is our Sierra Leone High Commission liaison office here in Lagos. I am the head of that office. The other document down here, I told you I was praying with Emmanuel TV, and my prayer point was, God, favor me so that one day I will come to Synagogue Church of All Nations. And when the postings came out, my name was there for Nigeria. Thank you, Jesus. The same 2014, in October, I was again promoted as Assistant Secretary Cadet Grade 7. People of God, this is my present promotion now. 2017, 2016 stroke, 1717. Senior Assistant Secretary Grade 8. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel. To God be the glory. That clap is not enough. Put your hands together for mighty Jesus. And tell us, madam, with this promotion God has given you, what are some of the beneficiaries you have now due to this promotion? The first one I can say, when you are posted in the foreign mission, they will give you a diplomatic passport. And this is my diplomatic passport. My husband has a diplomatic passport. My children have service passport. That is the, that, that, those are one of the benefits you will get once you have been posted in the foreign mission. And as I'm standing here, after the High Commissioner, we have our Head of Chancery. And after the Head of Chancery, he is the Head of the Administration. And we have the First Secretary. And that I can say, I'm in that position. And I'm the one heading our office here in Lagos, VI. Put Thank your hands you, together Jesus. for Christ Jesus. What a mighty God we serve.
Tell your neighbor, what the mighty God we serve. I believe with you that Jesus Christ is going to change your level in Jesus' mighty name. Ma'am, for the benefit of those watching, people are going through career failure. What word of encouragement do you have for them? My word of encouragement is simple. Believe in God, obey, and allow God to fix your timetable for you. When God fixes your timetable, you will never fail any exam on earth. And keep watching Emmanuel TV. Pray along with Prophet TV Joshua and believe in his teaching. It will be perfected for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Indeed, we rejoice with you and we thank God for this change, this radical transformation. And with all of these blessings, we want to encourage you to be a blessing to others. And we know the best is yet to come in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Escuchamos este otro grandioso testimonio de progreso laboral en la vida de esta mujer. Ella nos cuenta que desde el año 2011 en su país de origen Sierra Leona, ella inició como funcionaria pública. Ella nos cuenta que un día llegó a su casa y sus hijos le dijeron, mamá, hemos encontrado un canal de televisión muy interesante. Ella preguntó qué canal era y ellos le dijeron que era Emanuel TV. Desde ese mismo momento ella inició... Eh, a ver Emanuel TV, a sintonizarlo y orar junto al profeta TV Joshua cuando él oraba por los televidentes y cuando él hacía la oración masiva. Ella nos cuenta que en ese entonces su punto de oración era Señor, permíteme poner mi pie sobre esa iglesia. Yo quiero estar presente en esa iglesia porque reconocía que era un lugar de bendición. Ella nos cuenta que finalmente en su trabajo hicieron la convocatoria para funcionarios públicos en el extranjero. Ella Dice que con mucha fe ah, eh, se presentó a esas convocatorias, solicitó ese empleo y dice que para la gloria y la honra de Jesucristo fue seleccionada y para más eh, gloria de Dios eh, fue seleccionada para el país de Nigeria. Y dice que una vez llegó a Nigeria con su esposo y sus hijos, ella empezó a ser miembro de Emanuel TV, asistir cada domingo, obtuvo el agua de la mañana, la calcomanía de la mañana y el brazalete de la fe. Y dice que orando día a día con estas armas, el progreso llegó aún más en su vida. Cuenta que una vez más eh, hicieron convocatorias para nuevos empleos, para posiciones más altas y dice que con fe ella estudió y se presentó. Dice que para la gloria y la honra de Jesucristo ella hoy es una asistente diplomática y de la oficina general de, la, de Sierra Leona aquí en Nigeria, ella nos dice que para la gloria y la honra de Jesucristo ha pasado por muchos nombramientos e incluso su esposo también hoy tienen el pasaporte diplomático y tienen muchos otros beneficios que normalmente tomarían cinco años alcanzarlos pero ella en tan solo tres años los ha alcanzado y reconoce que solamente el poder de Dios a través de los artículos espirituales de la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones y de orar junto al profeta TV Joshua. Así que continuamos. Nous avons entendu le merveilleux témoignage de cette jeune femme qui vient de Sierra Leone. Elle a dit qu'elle est entrée dans la fonction publique il y a trois ans et demi de cela. Elle est entrée vraiment dans une dans la fonction publique au, au plus haut, au plus bas niveau, parce que quand vous ayez justement un doctorat ou une maîtrise, quand vous rentrez dans la fonction publique, vous entrez au plus bas niveau avant de pouvoir monter les échelons. Elle est entrée au grade 5. Elle a dit que c'est comme cela qu'elle a commencé sa carrière. Elle a découvert les malades télévision par ses enfants qui un jour ont découvert ces malades télévision. Elle a commencé à regarder. Elle a prié qu'un jour que Dieu puisse donner la grâce de pouvoir venir au Nigeria, de pouvoir venir à la synagogue église de toutes les nations. C'est comme cela qu'elle priait justement, et que Dieu a répondu à sa prière lorsqu'elle a reçu une promotion, alors que c'est une promotion qu'elle n'aurait pas dû recevoir, car de passer d'un grade à l'autre, il devait faire au moins 5 ans avant de passer de grade 5 au grade 6. C'est comme ça qu'elle a été postée dans un pays étranger un jour, elle a reçu une promotion, et pour sa grande surprise, le pays étranger où elle a été postée était le Nigeria, pour que Dieu a répondu à sa prière, elle a été postée au grade, au grade 7. Elle a dit ce qui n'arrive jamais, mais c'est vrai que c'était la grâce de Dieu, grâce à Emmanuel Télévision. Elle est arrivée ici, postée au Nigeria, elle est devenue membre 
de la synagogue église de toutes les nations utilisait l'eau du matin et les autocollants en moins. Et aujourd'hui, elle est fière de dire que même en, en un an et demi, en l'année 2016, elle a été promue encore au grade 8, chose qui n'arrive jamais, que, que c'est seulement par l'eau du matin et l'autocollant en moins qu'elle a été promue première secrétaire maintenant dans la haute commission de Sierra Leone ici au Nigeria. C'est justement la, le bureau qui représente l'ambassade de Sierra Leone. Et aujourd'hui, elle est la, la senior assistante secrétaire, première secrétaire pour la gloire de Dieu, grâce à l'eau du matin. Familiar spirit. I say you familiar spirit. I say this familiar spirit. They cause sickness. They cause disease. Whatever this familiar spirit must have cost you. His name is demon. His name is Satan. His name is destruction. His name is killer. You familiar spirit, we say to you, whatever you cause them, go out, go out, go out with your sickness, out with your disease, out with your failure, out with your setback, out with your nightmare, out with your limitation, out. Of the river. 
Shawn. Glory be to God. We have seen what took place. That was the mass prayer uh, service. During the mass prayer right here at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, uh, we have seen the demonstration of the power and the spoken word. As the man of God offered the prayer during that uh, faithful Sunday, we can see how the Holy Spirit moved mightily amongst the people and this family received their mighty deliverance. So right here, they're here in our midst to test of that goodness of God in their lives. So you are very much welcome to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Tell us your name, introduce the people standing beside you and your wonderful testimony. People of God, Emmanuel. My name is uh, Ngozi Christian and Joko. The girl standing beside me, beside me is my daughter and the next is my lovely mother. It started at my tender age. In the village, a girl came to me and asked me to go to the stream with her. So I said, okay, let us go to the stream. As we are going to the stream, we reached to the stream. As we were streaming, she was teaching me how to stream. Later, I saw myself far away in the stream, in the river. I saw something was dragging my foot heavily, dragging my foot. That's to, for me to enter inside the river. So I was screaming, screaming. A lady came and brought me out from the river. I thought all was over. I went to the house. I did not even tell my mother, neither did I tell my father. At the time, I started dreaming strange dreams. Strange things was happening to me, seeing snake, seeing a woman coming to me with a crown, wanted to crown me. I thought it was over. Can you, can you please describe the... Uh this woman that uh, came to you in the dream after your encounter at uh, the river. The woman, very beautiful woman, putting on a gown and a crown on her head. She always comes to the dream for her to put on the crown on my head. So as time goes on, I thought it was all over. I don't even explain my, what I'm going through to anybody. So I started, I was in primary school then. When I finished my primary school, I was in secondary school. So when I was in secondary school, the spirits keep on disturbing me. I see snakes, a woman coming to me always. So I thought it was over. That was how I see myself, school mother, school father, the school mother, they come to me and ask me for friendship, for them to be my school mother. So that was how I saw myself being bisexual. So okay. I thought it was over. So we I heard from the lady who said at a tender age she was in the village when a friend invited her to the stream in order to educate her on how to swim. So as she said, she was there in the, in the stream swimming when she felt a force dragging her inside the depth of the water. But luckily for her on that day, her friend was able to rescue her out of the river said that was the beginning of her problem that as she slept she saw that queen of the coast a tall beautiful lady with a crown on her head come to her wanting to crown her as well as a queen and she said that was how she became bisexual so tell us what happened when you got into school to the secondary school what happened when i got into secondary school a lady came to me and said she's my school mother so i saw myself being biosexual so I knew one boy, he pregnanted me. On the long, at the long t the boy pregnanted me and he refused that he's not the father, that he doesn't know anything about that. I said, okay, there is no problem. I called my parents, by then they were in Cameroon. I called them and said, mommy, look at what is happening to me. She said, my daughter, don't worry, everything will be over. After delivering, carry the child and come over here in Cameroon. So after I delivered, I took my daughter to Cameroon. She was two months old then. We got there. She started growing up with my parents. But along the line, I saw her living the same life I was living. I said, God, what is really happening to us? So she before you go on to tell us uh, the problem your daughter also had after you gave birth to her, can you explain further about that spirit that came upon you after your encounter with the queen of the coast in the dream? You mentioned that you became bisexual. Can you explain to us how that affected your social life, the kind of relationship you had in the physical world? 
What happened to me when I see women, I see them like men. I don't value men. So that was what happened to me after the woman crowned me. Okay, and you said uh, later on you got involved with a man and gave birth to your daughter with standing beside you. Can you tell us, at what age actually did you give birth to your daughter? Age of 14. Okay. I gave birth to her. So, what? so I saw her living the same life I, I was living. So she herself, she got pregnant at the age of 14. So I, <laughs> I bought her the baby two times. So she was disturbing me, my mother, everybody in the house. She doesn't sleep in the house. She goes outside, she smokes. I was worried. I went to all the herbalists there in Cameroon. They keep on eating my money because I'm, uh, I'm a hairdresser by profession. They keep eating my money. The last one was, he asked me to give him money to buy a living snake, that he will bury the snake and a coffin. I gave him money. So I also bought a coffin. He buried it, but everything was worse soon. I said, what is really happening? So what was the purpose why you went to this native doctor who requested for his live snake to bury? What was the purpose why you went to all these native doctors? I went to him for the purpose of my daughter, not even for myself. Okay. Not even for myself. But after performing all these sacrifices, nothing happened. Nothing was happening. It okay, was it? even worse and worse and worse. So I keep. Watching. Can you not tell us more about the lifestyle you lived as a result of your encounter with the Queen of the Coast? Tell us more about the lifestyle you're experiencing in life. The experience in life is that men do come to me, they give me rings, they engage me, but later they will go away, they will not come back. So I keep asking myself, what is really happening to me? At my, out of my age, I'm not married. So I don't know that it was that spirit of that queen that is really disturbing me. So mm -hmm. later I said, okay. I was watching TV Joshua television. I said, ah, if this beautiful woman can come and start in in front of the world and testify what the Lord has done, then who am I? I know that I'm a proud girl. I know that, yes, I'm proud of myself, but I'll put all those things, both the proudness and the beauty, I'll put it aside. One day, I know God will see me through and I'll testify what he has done to me. That was how I decided to travel back home to come here. But unfortunately, that was last week Friday. My daughter knew very well that we are to come to the uh, Sinago Church of All Nations. She left the house on Friday and she never come back. I was crying, Lord, please, what is really happening? Is this an obstacle or what? I did not see her. When I called her number, she don't speak my number. I said, what is really happening? I prayed. I said, please, God of TB Joshua, wherever this girl is, please drag her back home here. It was already late in the afternoon. When I was sleeping, I saw somebody calling me on phone. Mommy, mommy, I'm coming back. Don't be angry. I don't want you to beat me. I said I will not beat you. Come and let's go where we are supposed to go. We will take night bus. That was how we left over it to here. Okay. So on that faithful Sunday, you are in the Synagogue Church of All Nations. So can you tell us what actually happened on that day? <clears throat> when I was entering the gate, I said, God, I don't go to church. I can remember the last time I went to church was past four or five years. So when I was entering the gate, I said, Lord, as I'm entering this gate, I'm making a vow. As from today, I will be going to church. It's a vow, and I promise I'll be doing that. When I entered the church, when there was mass prayer, a spirit came to me and asked, the, the vow you make that you'll be going to church, are you sure you fulfill that vow? I said, yes. I will be going to church every Sunday, no matter what. Immediately I finished saying that, I saw myself on the floor. That was how I saw myself on the altar. So then tell us what happened afterwards. I'm very, very happy and I'm proud to be here. Hallelujah. I thank God, I thank God for the God of Prophet T.B. Joshua. So we have heard from the sister who said um, immediately she stepped her feet at the Synagogue Church of All Nations uh, during the mass prayer 
uh, as the prayer was going on and Prophet T.B. Joshua was praying for the whole congregation and the power of the Holy Spirit, she was arrested by the Holy Spirit on that day. And that was how the evil spirit in her started manifesting. And that day she received her deliverance. So sister, tell us once again, because the evidence of Christ Jesus is life change. And you are going to tell us exactly the difference you have seen in your life since you received your deliverance. So can you not tell us once again, what was the life you were living before in the past? And what has God done for you now? Since I was delivered, when I see a woman, I see a woman as a woman. And when I see a man, I see a man as a man. But before now, what kind of life were you living then? Mm, the type of life I was living then, in regards I to your relationship with women. Yeah, I was having a relationship with women, and uh, I don't see man as man. I see women like man. So meaning that you are actually having affairs with women like yourself in the past. Yes. Mm. So now when I even see woman, I see her as woman. I see man as man. So I thank God for that. And secondly, yesterday my brother just called me and asked me, how much are you owing for your store rent? since you traveled to Nigeria, and how much are you owing for your house rent? I was surprised. I said, ah, this thing has never happened to me, to me before. Somebody calling me, asking me, you are debt and all the rest. I was happy. I said, okay, this is the number of my landlady, and this is the lady, uh, this is the number of my landlord of the house and the salon. So I gave the number. He promised that he would pay the rent. Hallelujah. Once again, shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Yes, you have just listened to this life-changing testimony uh, from our sister who has been separated from the kingdom of darkness. He said her past, she was living a very rough life and uh, she was bisexual, as you said, uh, being attracted to women like herself. And her life, in short, in a nutshell, was not in accordance with God's word. But that was her past. But as we know that Jesus Christ enters her life to put an end to her past and give birth to our future. And that is exactly what God has done in the life of her sister. And today she's testifying that her past is indeed over. Once again, let us rejoice with our sister by putting our hands together beautifully for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just to thank God. Before we go on to listen to your advice concerning what God has done in your life, you know you made mention about your daughter who is standing beside you, and we know she's going to be in the best position to share with us our own testimony. But before we go on to listen to her, we are going to watch the screen of our television once again and see how she also uh, received her deliverance. So let us stay tuned. flows through the faculties of Prophet T.B. Joshua, bringing healing, deliverance, and all of God's blessings into the lives of the people who have come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. As Prophet T.B. Joshua continues to pray for them, he encounters this lady who immediately begins to manifest. Let's see what happens. Uh, who are you? Uh, I'm the queen. How many people are in this fire? Fire! 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 I will destroy my family. I will destroy my family. Isn't God good? God is indeed wonderful. As you say, when God delivers you, He delivers you completely and He delivers you effectually. Not only did God Almighty deliver the mom, the daughter also received a complete deliverance. And that is the video clip we have just watched. So you're very much welcome. As you know, the daughter is right here in our midst. So introduce yourself and share with us your testimony. People of TV, they show a man well. My name, my name is Anastasia Njoko Chino, so I'm from Imo State. I'm 18 years. Since 13 years, that's when I was this virgin, 13 years. That's when they raped me, when I was 13 years. So since then, my eyes were open. So if they send me that I should go and buy an egg, I will run away. I will never come back till one year or one month. I will not come back home. 
So my mom says sometimes she will send people to hold me and they will not see me. So when she will send me to school, I will not go to school direct. I will just hang around with boys, flex, and I will smoke and drink. I will not concentrate on my education. So last year... Before you go on to tell us, uh, what, can you tell us uh, how this uh, life you lived affected you? And your education, you said uh, at the very tender age of 13, that was when you started living this life. Your mother made mention of something that you had to uh, get rid of some pregnancy. Can you expand on that and tell us more about what happened? So when I was raped that 13 years, so I was living bad life and sleeping with men. I got pregnant two times and that is how they aborted the child. So since then, still, my mom still will change my school. I will still behave the same life, going around, smoking, going to clubs. I will not concentrate. Even when my mom still sends me, I will not come back. I run away. Even when I'm with her, even when she talks to me, I will disobey her. I will not hear her. And even my grandmother, my sisters, everybody, they hate me, the family, based on my attitude bad life and everything so, so you mean because of the bad gangs you joined at school your mom had to change your school how many times actually did this have to happen she have changed my school almost seven times seven times your mom changed your school with the hope that uh, the new school you will go to you will meet good friends but are you saying that all this never uh, brought any fruitful results Yes, so she changed my school, thinking that maybe all those bad friends, I will, stay, I will not be still doing them. So still, the same thing. So that's how it happened. So last week, Friday, my mom still told me that we are going to see Joshua. So I said, okay, that we are going to go. So in the afternoon, around 3 o'clock, she went out. So for then, I said, okay, I, I, I will not go to the TV Joshua. So that's how I went and see my friend. That's how she took me out. So since then, my mom still has been calling me on the phone, that where are you? Come, come. You know that we are going to TV Joshua. I did not answer the call. So she called one of my friends and told the, 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 the person that, see you, see, where my daughter is, bring her back because we are going to TV Joshua. The boy said, okay, that I'm going to call her and tell her. That's how the boy called me. I started saying that, go back to you, your parents. They are looking for you. They said, you are going to see with Joshua. Go back. So I said, ah, I've heard though. So my mom called me, called me. I didn't pick the call. I was just there saying, no, nah, let her not call me. I'm not going anywhere. So later on, uh, five minutes, my mom she called me. I said, no, I will not pick this girl. I will not pick it. Let her go where she wants to go. I'm not going anywhere. So one of my men said, no, I should go. And so what finally happened? So what finally happened? Five minutes, I really went back home. I called my mom first before I reached home. I told her that, mom, I'm very sorry. I don't want to come back because I'm afraid that you are going to beat me. She said, no, that I should come back, that she will not beat me. That she, I know that we are going so way. I said, okay. So I came back now. That is how we enter bus, night bus, and came here. On my way entering inside the church, so I, Chibi Joshua was coming near me. I was so afraid. I'm fire. I was seeing fire. It was burning my leg and burning over my body. So that is how I managed Chibi Joshua prayed on me. And that is how I, I, he delivered me. And now I'm free. Before I was dreaming about snake, bad, bad things, but for now, since Chibi Joshua delivered me, I really thank God for what he did to me. But I'm no more dreaming any bad dream again or dreaming any stupid things again. Thank God for Emmanuel Chibi Joshua. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Hallelujah. We give glory to God Almighty. And just to understand the mightiness of what God has done in your life and the kind of life you have been delivered from. Can you just in a nutshell explain to us once again what kind of relationship did you have in the past with men? What kind of men were actually taking you out then and to what extent did you go in a relationship with men? 
So if I go out, men, they will sleep with me, they will not do anything, they will just promise me, they will just sleep with me, nothing, nothing, just like that. But this year now... And what kind of men are you going out with then? And what kind of life are you living with this men? There are big men, some are big men, some are just as in little boys, able boys. And how will you describe this kind of life you are living then? In one I word. I was living back, like, I was not, I said, I don't always go to school, not, not, I don't concentrate in my education. It's only on them that I concentrate. So you have heard from my sister that in the past, actually, she was going with big men, with different kind of men to the extent that she abandoned her school. She had no focus on her education. Her life was focused mainly on men. That was the kind of life she was living then. And we can know, we can actually describe or conclude what this kind of life is all about. But after your deliverance, can you tell us the changes you have seen in yourself since you are delivered? The changes I've seen in myself is that I'm no more dreaming anymore or going out or smoking or drinking. But I really thank God for what C.B. Joshua did to me. And I really appreciate what he did to me. And parents, I really want you to always take care of your children and always focus with God. So since your deliverance, you are testifying that those urges you have that pushed you to go out with different kind of men day in day out and made you to lose focus on your education is no more. Yes. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? For this wonderful thing he has done in the life of the sister, rescuing her out of the captivity of Satan and bringing her back to light. We give glory to God for what he has done in your life. I also thank you for that wonderful advice. And uh, before we go on to listen to your mom's advice, we just want to hear a word from the woman standing beside you. Can you introduce those standing beside you, please? Introduce them. Oh. This woman here is my grandmother, and this one here is my lovely mother. So let us go and let us hear from your grandmom. Prophet. Madam, you're very much welcome. Can you please tell us your name, introduce those standing beside you? And what do you have to say in a nutshell regarding what God has done in your family? Emmanuel. I am Elis Madam Elizabeth in Jokun. What I saw last okay, what I saw last last week was terrible about my first daughter and my granddaughter. May T V show Joshua, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, T V Joshua, I come here because of you. Please help me. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see the cry of joy uh, from the grandmom. I know what million words are not enough to describe what God has done in the life of our family. Madam, I know as a grandmom, you have gone through a lot, uh, seeing the kind of lifestyle your daughter and granddaughter was living then. And we know that today that God has rescued them, you have a lot to say to people listening to you all over the world. So what can you say concerning the kind of life your daughter and your granddaughter was living in the past? Can you explain more about this? Please, I will speak in broken. You are free yeah. to express yourself. This is my first daughter. At times, she angry about me. When I say something, she will be annoyed or she will be talking to me anyhow, but since she has delivered, I'm covered. Nothing wrong with her again. What about your granddaughter? <laughs> this is my daughter. She always disturbs me. And it's because of her. I want to die because of her. Hmm? Then. I pray to my God Almighty to bless this daughter for me in Jesus' name. Tell, um, tell us more about the kind of lifestyle she lived then. At the times when I, when I take and go to uh, this uh, farm, she will run away from the farm. 
When I send her to go and buy me eggs, maybe that egg is three, it won't be enough. Okay, go and buy three or five again. I won't see her again. She will just go out for two weeks before coming back. We heard from the grandmom who is uh, telling us, uh, to the glory of God, the kind of uh, life the daughter and the granddaughter lived in the past before their deliverance. Firstly, she talked about her daughter, which she said she was possessed then, and that evil spirit made her to be very angry. And this anger created a lot of problems between the daughter and herself. Whatever she tells her, she would not listen. But since her daughter's deliverance, she has seen that big difference in her that she's now a calm person. And she was going on to tell us also about her granddaughter, which is also talking about the kind of lifestyle she lived in the past, how she will leave the house and not return in days. So tell us more about the kind of lifestyle your granddaughter was living then. She was smoking, okay. she was drinking, she was going to club. When I look for her, I won't see her. I say, well, may God let her come back today or tomorrow. That's it. The woman said that uh, sometimes when she took her granddaughter to the farm and uh, she would just uh, disappear, that is go her own way and would not see her for days. She would have to engage in a lot of vigorous prayer to get her granddaughter back home. And tell us how this lifestyle of your daughter affected you. What kind of men did you see her going out with then? And how did she spend her life with this men? And how did this affect her education then as a child? There are many. I cannot count them. I cannot. I cannot even see few. When I see them, I drive them away from my compound. She'd be angry about me. Why driving them? I say, well, this is my house. It's not belong to you. The grandmother is further explaining that the, the, the granddaughter was living a very wayward life and was going out with a lot of men that she cannot even give account of the number of men she used to go out with. And a lot of them will throng her compound to see her granddaughter. And she will have to spend time driving those men away from her compound, making it known to them clearly that this house belongs to her, not them. So they should not come to her compound again. So tell us more, madam. With my age, um, I was born in 1960. To be looking for this chap, I know this chap will take care of me when she's free. And a man, a, a, a TV Joshua have met, they have settled everything to her. So I'm free in Jesus' name. Madam, I really appreciate what God has done in your life. The moment, I mean, know the mother is full of joy concerning what God has done in the life of her daughter. As she said, at her age, her old age, it was not, uh, did not all go well for her to spend her life in this kind of way. I mean, have to chase men out of her daughter's life, but she's happy today that indeed God has done something miraculous in the life of the daughter. Madam, can you not tell us once again, since your daughter's deliverance, tell us exactly what are the changes, the big difference you have noticed in the life of your granddaughter? She have hungry before, but now she's okay with the mother. We are saying, expand more because <laughs> what God removed from our life, cast out of our life, is not something small. But remember that this problem has been ongoing. It's like a curse from the mother to the daughter. So can you tell us the changes, expand more because people want to learn and know the mightiness of God in the life of His people. Thank you. She's it's already changed by now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We heart in a nutshell that since her deliverance, the daughter is now a changed person. And we give glory to God Almighty. So what do you want to advise the people listening to you? What advice do you have for them? Having gone through that experience and having seen what God has done in their lives, what advice do you have for we all? Um, I, my advice for all people here is let something like this did not come to you, to your family, in Jesus' name.
We have heard from them, from our mother, offering a wonderful prayer for us that uh, this experience she went through in the past is not something she prays anybody should go through. And she's praying that we also may stand firm in the word of God so that it will always guide ourselves and will, will not fall into that same situation. We give glory to God. And there's one person who has not had advice, our sister. Can you tell us your own advice uh, to people listening to you all over the world? My advice to the world is this. I will use what Prophet G.P. Joshua used last week Sunday. He says, for a goal to be good, you have to face challenges. And when you face challenges, you, have, you need faith. So people all around the world have faith. Distance is not a barrier. This is my advice to the world. Leave your beauty, leave your proudness, leave everything behind. Just come to God. Say out your sins and you will be saved, just as I did in Jesus' name. So you have heard from my sister who said, no matter the problem or situation you may be facing in life, you should run to God and He's able to see you through. Yes, we give glory to God for what He has done in your life. I'm thank you for that wonderful advice. And I just want to advise you also that God Almighty has taken you out of that kingdom of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of light. And He said that the primary reason for this is for the salvation of your soul. So make sure you stand firm in the Word of God. Make His Word the foundation of your life and your home. And that Word will continue to set you on the good road to the good life. Once again, let us put our hands together beautifully for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for what he has done in the life of this family. Acabamos de escuchar este impactante testimonio de liberación de esta mujer y de su hija. Ella nos comenta que cuando ella era niña, una amiga la llevó al río y le dijo que le iba a enseñar a nadar. En ese momento, ella nos comenta que el río la empezaba a jalar. Desde ese momento, dice que entró en ella un espíritu del reina del río. Ella empezó a tener sueños donde una mujer que estaba en el río se acercaba a ella y la quería coronar. Hasta constantemente tenía estos sueños hasta que llegó el momento donde finalmente fue coronada. Desde ese momento, dice que en la secundaria, las mujeres se le acercaban. Empezaba a tener relaciones con ellas y ella se dio cuenta de que tenía una... Un, de que era bisexual. Nos comenta que a los 14 años ella quedó embarazada. Buscando la solución a muchos problemas que ella tenía, decidió dejar a su hija con sus padres y viajó a Camerún, llevando una vida desenfrenada, una vida de liberalismo, teniendo muchos problemas. Ella encontró Emanuel TV y empezó a mirar. Ella decidió venir a, a Nigeria, decidió regresar a Nigeria para poder asistir a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones. Sin embargo, ella se encontró con su hija que también nos comenta que a los 13 años fue violada y en su hija tenía un espíritu de enojo. Su hija empezó a fumar y a consumir alcohol, era rebelde, abandonaba sus casas y también tenía relaciones con hombres mayores. Ella nos comenta que su hija tuvo dos abortos, la llevó a su hija a un espiritista, este espiritista le entregó una serpiente, pero su hija cuando abandonó el hogar después de dos días, dice que llamó a su mamá y regresó a su hogar y finalmente pudieron venir juntas al Escoan, a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones. Ella nos comenta que durante la oración masiva, donde el hombre de Dios, el profeta Tibi Joshua empezó a orar, ella empezó a clamar pidiéndole a Dios que interviniera en su vida, en su situación, porque quería ser libre. Ella empezó a sentir un calor, un, un, fue, un fuego muy fuerte dentro de ella y vio, se vio así misma en el altar. Hoy podemos ver en pantallas que ella es totalmente libre. Ella y su hija son totalmente libres y para la gloria de Jesucristo, porque para Dios no hay imposible. Hoy camina la luz de su testimonio con total libertad y ella aconseja a todas las personas, a todos los espectantes, telespectantes de todo el mundo, que recurran a Jesús, porque Él es el mismo ayer, hoy y siempre, y para Él no hay imposible. Continuamos. Vous venez d'écouter le magnifique témoignage de cette femme ici présente, venue témoigner avec sa fille et sa euh, grand-mère. Euh, la femme a expliqué que petite, elle apprenait à nager avec une amie dans une rivière. Et euh, quand elle s'est éloignée, elle a senti que quelque chose la paix dans le fond. 
Et c'est à ce moment-là que son amie l'a secouru. En rentrant chez elle, elle a dit que... Elle ne cessait de faire des, de, de rêves étranges où une femme venait la voir dans, dans, dans les rêves, la mettre une couronne sur la tête, elle voyait des serpents et d'autres choses étranges. Elle dit que c'est à la suite de cela qu'elle est devenue euh, bisexuelle. Elle, avait des, elle, elle, voyait, elle expliquait comment elle voyait les, les femmes comme des hommes. À l'âge de 14 ans, elle est tombée enceinte de sa propre fille qui est ici présente au milieu. Et euh, elle a emmené son enfant au Cameroun afin qu'elle grandisse avec ses parents. Mais à son grand désarroi, elle a expliqué que sa fille, en grandissant, a pris exactement le même chemin qu'elle. Qu sa propre fille est même tombée euh, enceinte euh, par deux fois à l'âge de 13-14 euh, ans. En recherchant des solutions partout, elle a même recherché des solutions auprès des charlatans, mais, mais sans succès. Ils lui ont même dit d'emmener un serpent et de l'enterrer vivant, mais cela n'a rien fait pour améliorer sa, sa, sa situation et ses conditions. Et euh, c'est à force de chercher qu'elle a trouvé Emmanuel TV et qu'elle a retrouvé de l'espoir. En venant ici dans la synagogue à l'église de toutes les nations et, en, en, elle a, et durant la prière de masse à l'église la semaine dernière, les esprits mauvais ont été complètement exposés. Vous avez, pu sa, vous avez vu sa délivrance et, et au nom de Jésus-Christ. Depuis, elle explique qu'elle n'éprouve plus cette attirance envers les femmes et que depuis sa délivrance, euh, son propre frère même l'a appelé pour lui dire qu'il était prêt en charge et il était prêt à prendre en charge ses propres dettes. La fille, sa propre fille a également pris la parole pour témoigner. Elle a expliqué que depuis qu'elle a été victime d'un viol à l'âge de 13 ans, elle vivait une vie de, de, de débauche. Elle sortait et couchait avec euh, des, des hommes. Elle, euh, elle, des, des, elle s'était mis, même mise à fumer. Son caractère était si difficile qu'elle a dû changer d'école euh, par plus de 7 fois. Également, quand elle est venue ici, accompagnée de sa mère à la synagogue, visite de toutes les nations, vous avez vu euh, sur la télé un clip euh, rapide où vous avez vu également la délivrance de sa fille. Elle a expliqué qu'elle qu ressentait des, du feu au niveau de ses jambes pendant sa délivrance et que depuis sa délivrance, elle n'éprouve plus l'envie de courir après les hommes et l'envie de fumer est également une chose du passé. Elle est libre, elle rend grâce à Dieu pour cela. La grand-mère également qui a pris la parole tient témoigner du changement qu'elle a vu dans, ses, dans sa fille et dans sa propre petite fille et que leur mauvaise vie est une chose du passé. Ensemble, cette petite famille conseille à tous d'avoir foi en Dieu, laissez votre beauté de côté, vos ennuis de côté, votre fierté de côté, et venez à Dieu pour votre salut et délivrance. and how they were delivered and the group problem that brought them to the synagogue church of all nations before they come out to share their testimony we are going to watch on the screen of our television how they receive their deliverance and don't forget deliverance is the answer and the solution to all fundamental problems of life because demons are responsible for whatever crisis situation bad character that we are facing today So let us watch the screen and God bless you. As you listen to this testimony, we have a lot of lessons to learn from it. Thank you. As Prophet T.B. Joshua prays for the people one by one, whatever change Satan might have used to connect them to himself is disconnected in Jesus' name. Watch. As the prophet prays for this boy with a tattoo on his chest and the evil spirit destroying his life is exposed by the light of God and he begins to confess. Okay, what have you done to him? What have you done to him? Destroyed him. You said what? I have destroyed him. Oh, yeah, how have you destroyed him? How have you destroyed him? You made him do what? Smoke. Oh, you, you made him smoke? Uh-huh. What else? What else have you made him do? 
Drugs. Drugs. What, which kind of drugs? Which drugs? You okay. may take which drugs? Huh? Okay. Who gave him this mark on his body? Who gave him this mark? I made him do it. Uh -huh. What is the meaning of this mark? What is the meaning of this tattoo? Toughness. Uh huh. He never listened to his parents. You never listened to his parents. Uh huh. What else have you pushed him to do? What else? Stealing. You made him steal it. Speak why? Up. Why? Why did he paint his toenails? Why? Why? I just want him to be like a... You, you want him to be like what? Like me. Okay, who are you? Handsome. You're handsome. Okay, who are you? You have a name. Who are you? Who are you? Kena. Huh? My name is Kena. Who is this woman? I don't know. You don't know?